podcast uh, where we explore interesting people doing interesting things with the pillars of health, wealth and wisdom. So today we've got Gail, the co-founder of Upstate Studios. You've been doing it since 2009, is that 2009, correct? 2009, yeah. It's a while. It is a while. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? Are you tired? Are you inspired? Oh mate, always inspired, always inspired for sure. Yeah, it, it does not feel like it's been that long, but there's been so much evolution and change and growth during that time. So. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun, hey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, jump in, go closer, and maybe you go closer as yeah. well. Um, so, Upstate is a yoga and Pilates studio with a humble beginning in Geelong, but expanding rapidly across Victoria and possibly Australia and maybe the world. I don't know. At the rate you guys are going and the yeah. things that are happening, it seems likely that it's moving in that direction, which is cool. Yeah, why, why stop it nationally, hey? Exactly. exactly. Have we, is, this a, is this the first thing? time you've spoken about international kind of things outside of your little oh look i've, I've always spoken about international probably more in jest <laughs> um not so much but anymore. yeah look you know i think it's we've always had a big dream for what we could create um and and you know i think we've never been ones to lock down a three-year plan necessarily mm. but we've always think big and then take opportunities when they're presented to us and that means the sky's the limit you yeah. Know, when you think big, you can. Oh, I love that. Go for it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. The um, I saw somewhere in an article that you say your mission is to create positive state of mind for people through movement, connecti- connection, and positivity. Has that is that the same, or is that kind of updated? Where are you at with that? Yeah, do you know what? that that is the same. And when we first started in two thousand and nine, we started um, with yoga as our only modality. And um, for us at the times, my background was in marketing. And I was started practicing in yoga in 2004, mm-hmm. which um, you guys are babies. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've scene. got a baby's face, <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty old now. Came to the scene in 2004, living in Melbourne. There wasn't a huge amount of yoga for a start, and uh, it was the same year like Lululemon opened their first store in Australia. So even fitness as a category mm. was relatively new, um, and yoga was so hit and miss depending where you went some places you know were like very spiritual uh had a real stigma around what it was people didn't understand necessarily Mm -hmm. what it was um and after i started practicing yoga and decided to do my teacher training which i did in the us where yoga was more mainstream um i really when we decided i guess to start open studio we kind of thought we need to not necessarily talk about yoga or the postures Mm. or even you know the benefits of yoga we need to actually just talk about how it makes you feel Mm. mentally Mm. Uh, and for us it was always about the mindset and creating a positive state of mind so when we first sat down to think about opening our studio we were like okay this is going to be all about creating a positive state of mind through movement yeah. Not even through yoga, through movement, uh, which has actually been amazing because when we opened, it was yoga was our only modality, and at that stage we didn't foresee that we would have Pilates and reformer and boxing, uh, but we have you know expanded in that way, and the mission has just allowed us because it was more about how you feel through movement, regardless yeah. of the movement style. It has still served us, and it's still like our north star of what we um, aim to deliver. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. It's uh, I like those kind of stories where you, you go in a direction that you don't expect, but the fundamentals are the same. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you go? Oh, I think, yeah. Look, I think, you know, it, it's important to always evolve, whether that's in business or yeah. as a person. But fundamentally, um, sticking to your core values, you know, and I think that's what we all do as we grow up and age is, you know, we might change a lot in what we do or what our interests are, but fundamentally our core values generally um, stay the same. I think for us as a business that has been the case where our core values have really stayed the same, but our business is completely different to what it was in 2009. And I don't think we'd be here or growing or expanding if it hadn't evolved. So I think evolving but sticking to your values is a really important thing to think about if you are, you know, especially as an entrepreneur. Um, because it can be really tempting to go to the next fad or the next trend. Um, and that's, that's okay. It's, you know, you do need to continue to evolve, but does it actually stick to your core values or are you jumping on a trend that's actually 
you know, nothing to do with your mission or your purpose. And I think that's when people or brands fall over a bit is they jump on something, but it actually has doesn't underpin their purpose. Mm-hmm. And even for your team or your customer base, they're like, you know, shaking their heads a little bit, trying to understand where this brand's going. But I think mm-hmm. when brands grow and evolve, you take your team and you take your community with you when it is still really true to what you stand for. Yeah, you know what? It's funny you say the community side of things. I've because I've been at Upstate since twenty nineteen. Yeah. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Like, and I've come and gone, and I've gone overseas, and I've yeah. done things in fire, and I've done. I was in Tulum doing some yoga and stuff, and I always think I really like Upstate. <laughs> <laughs> always. Like and that. and a big part of it is the community that you've built. Yeah. Um, it's just, it feels like a bit of a family and someone new comes in, they're welcomed. There's, you know, all these little moments of kind of, these are these moments where you kind of go above and beyond at, for the people that are at your studio. Yeah. And it's also consistent. There's, a, I've noticed there's consistency. Yes. There's like, you can move in different directions, but generally there's a core consistency. Um, and, Community is really tough for businesses to get. <laughs> like, really yeah, I tough. Think get and keep. And like, keep, yeah. You sure. said, you know, yes, you've got to learn how to pivot as an entrepreneur when things like COVID, for example, yes. happen. It's yeah. like, how do you not stray from your core principles and actually stay the course, but reinvent the course yes. and just find ways to you know, maintain that trust because once the trust is gone, that's when it becomes really hard 100%. to build the trust again with people who might have stuck with you from day dot and then something happens and it's like keeping them on and yes. keeping them interested, which I think is something you guys did really well during COVID because I was seeing all this stuff that you guys were putting out, the online classes, that like that was a quick pivot because yes. you were forced to. Like yeah. your hand was literally forced. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. No, and I think, I, you know, I think now everyone does – want to build community yeah. and it's how a, did you it's a buzzword i guess like community what is it what does it mean how mm. do you do that and and as you said how do you re- retain it um i mean i think for us it has been and i guess just come back to our mission our mission is like creating a positive state of mind through movement connection and positivity so they're our three sort of you know key brand values so connection is like such a part of our mission and I think that it's something that we continually think about how we can continue to um, over deliver and connect with our, our members. Mm. Um, so, you know, certainly I think when you come and take a class, you know, probably at any studio, um, it would surprise people the amount of time, thought, constant refinement that goes into every single class. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have, um, I guess we've got frameworks for all our, our class styles so that we do have that consistency. Um, flip the remote, the thing around. I just noticed it's the wrong way. No, no, oh, turn, turn it around, around completely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and lock it. Yeah, they're cool. Oh. <laughs> I just noticed I'm like, oh, we've got it the wrong way. <laughs> okay. Continue. Um, so yeah, for us, I think it's, um, it's, it's been important to us through, you know, as we've developed the brand to really focus on our members and um, developing that relationship with them because you are taking them through a journey through the practice of yoga. Um, And I guess from our personal experience, we know that like being grounded in yoga, we know it greatly impacts the way people think, feel Mm. and live. And so we're always very conscious in the delivery of our class experience of the impact we're making on people. And that's a privilege that we have to be able to um, impact people's lives in such a positive way. So we take it, I guess we take that really seriously and hopefully that's what um, has connected with people and made them feel such a part of the community and continue to come. And as I said, as I think it is taking them on the journey with you, um, you know, because our brand and business has developed and changed and, you know, all through COVID and we've always been very transparent with our community our members. Um, you know, COVID was a classic example of that, like overnight all studios closed and we were super transparent of with our community of what, what it meant to us in that moment to have the doors closed, yeah. what we wanted to be and who we wanted to be during this time for our members. And 
in COVID, we just, um, Sherelle and I both kept saying to each other, like we really wanted to over deliver. Mm. Um, and so straight away we got you know, as many live streaming classes as we could. Um, you know, people were having a hard time. We, you know, dropped yoga mats at their houses, oh. did, oh, wow. um, you know, little things that like, no, no, no. I think we might have left a note from upstate, but like, you know, just um, didn't put that on socials or anything. Just yeah. little things that are just like trying to support our members yeah. when they were going through, you know, a really challenging yeah, time. And I think like when it gets really personal with people like that and you're not really kind of promoting that yes. on social, yeah. then it becomes like word of mouth. That's and right. It's just the most genuine, authentic connection yeah. that you could ever form with not just a customer, but a client. And like yeah. you said, you play, I know when I do yoga, like it becomes such a foundation in my day that you know, I have the same teachers I go to, they become a part of my life in this yes. like little tiny way. And it's like this connection. You might just speak to them for like five minutes in between the classes or whatnot. But like, if you're in in a place where it is such an important part of the day, like it's a critical role that you, you do play. Yeah, and I absolutely. And people realize that. For and like sure. you said with the classes, I sometimes am in a class like, Jesus, how do they think? Like, how do they remember this? How do they like... Because I'm sometimes off with the fairies and I'm like, they have to be so switched on. Yeah. Like, you have to be on because there are 20 people in the class relying on you to deliver. Absolutely. You know? yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, look, people are giving also one of the most precious commodities, which is their time. Like, yeah. all so busy. Um, so certainly we, you know, we really feel like we've got 500 classes a week on the schedule at the moment. Wow. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we really try to treat like every class is like a performance that people yeah. have bought a ticket to. It's curtains up. Show, yeah. Shows on and you're giving everyone the best experience you possibly can. Curtains down, it's live, it's in real time. Things happen all the time. <laughs> mic issues and all the things that can go on. Um, and it's all about like just trying to deliver, you know, the yeah. um, like we'll be the best part of someone's day is what we say. Is we really <laughs> try to be the best part of someone's day in, you know, their whole experience from yeah. the moment they walk in the door to the moment they leave. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you, I mean, there's a few pieces here that I'd love to dig into. Um, do you know my story and experience with Upstate in any detail? I don't. Okay, so we did an episode that will come before this mm -hmm. episode and just talking about the impact that yoga's had on my life and it was and it was Upstate that did it. So I went in probably 2019 or so, went through early 2020, I can't really remember now, it's all blur. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is I went through a breakup and that breakup rocked me to the core and I was the most depressed I've ever been in my life in that, like, I don't know if you've ever been in those, those spaces before where it's a like cycle of sadness, to anxiety, lack of sleep, yes, more absolutely. anxiety. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I got, it got really, really, really yeah. dark at one point. Um, and nothing was, nothing was like helping. Yeah. Like I was meditating, I was journaling, I was trying to exercise. Yeah, was, amazing. Yeah. I was not drinking, I was not doing drugs. I was just like, I need to not make this work. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and nothing was helping. And I got really, really dark. And then out of nowhere, I was like, right, maybe I'll do a yin class. And doing the yin class, you know, I did an on and off at Upstate. But I thought, okay, I'll do this yin class. And then I did the yin class. And that was fine. And they were like, oh, it's free. So I'm like, what? Why? Like, it's, uh, it's a free week. So you can come and go as you please for the week. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, all right, interesting. What else is on there? <laughs> <laughs> Love um, it. And I did this, and then I did a vinyasa. And I'm pretty sure it was when Mary was doing yes. the classes. So yeah. Mary kind of took me and my friend Dean under her wing. Yeah. And I did this class and the, the problem I had at the time, and I think I know why now is there's a bit of like ADHD going on, but I was in loops. I was in just like thought loops, thought, yeah. after thought loop after thought loop. It just would not go away. Yeah. I'm in this class, it's hot, I'm, I'm not <laughs> flexible, I'm yeah. struggling, I'm, but I eventually get into the flow of it and I get about half an hour through the, the, the class and I go, wait, I'm not thinking. <laughs> oh my God, I can so relate <laughs> to this. The first yes. time in probably three months and I was like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> and then yeah, I was like amazing yeah. and then amazing. afterwards it, like I've never been a runner um but and everyone talks about the runner's high and yes. I never get that when I'm doing like a workout but after that yoga class I had the runner's high yeah, and, I, yeah. and from then on I was like this is the way out yeah, of this yeah. that is healthy like th there were two yes. ways I probably could have gone and One's really dark and one, and this was another yes. path. 
And yeah, so I just dove headfirst in. I was going four or five days a week. Absolutely got obsessed. And since then, it's been a core part of my health practice, my spiritual practice, and just like my life. And I will preach this to yeah <laughs> to everybody I love anytime it. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you've seen an upstate but like i will drag people <laughs> in. i'm constantly telling everyone to come in and yeah it's... oh my god but look i i can just so relate because that's actually how pretty much upstate started really because um Cheryl, who's my sister and co-founder we we lost our brother in a car accident oh, shit. and uh he was young and his wife was due to have their first baby in a few weeks time and it was you know it was horrific as you can get and uh i was working in melbourne living in melbourne working in my you know marketing career at that time and yeah in a dark place too yeah. and just was really trying to work my way through this awful experience and uh, I was walking home and I saw two girls in front of me that had yoga mats under their arms. I was like, that's right, yoga. Yoga's meant yeah. to be good for you. So off I, I just followed them up these set of stairs and uh, <laughs> off the street in my, in my walking gear. And the girl at the front desk was kind of trying to tell me what to expect, but it was like class was starting in two minutes. And so I didn't really listen. And I went in so and- you've never, it, done no, never done it before? Never done it before. Didn't know what class style it was i'd done yoga before um and uh it turns out it was bikram Uh, i've done that before (laughs) oh my lord so 90 minutes 40 degrees and i was like oh my god what is this uh but i had that same moment that you experienced because i when i left i rang my mum and said look i don't know what i just did (laughs) what just happened (laughs) but i stopped thinking about everything yeah yeah and it was I can't, I just can't believe that I actually stopped thinking about everything. So I just went back the next day and the next day and the next day. And like you dragged everyone along, but this was, you know, back when yoga wasn't that accessible. Mm. And I think that's what sparked the idea um, to create a brand that was accessible because I just couldn't believe how much it changed my, my mindset at that time. Mm. And then all the physical benefits that came from that as well was just an absolute Mm. bonus. Mm. Um, and so I just felt like I tripped over it, I guess, and discovered it and it had such a profound impact. And I was trying to drag people along, um, but you know, there was a lot of resistance at the mm. time because yoga was, was you know, not mainstream at all. And spirituality so, and, and yeah. health, it was all very... So for me, it was um, that kind of really did spark the idea to create this brand that was you know, all about positivity and movement and not necessarily about yoga, even though that's what the service was. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's the thing because it's daunting for people who, especially if you've never tried yoga. I know if I've tried to get friends to come along to any sessions, they think there's a certain stereotype of person that, yes. has, that can only do it. And yeah. it's like, no, 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 it's not even really about, can you hold this for like 20 minutes? No, it's like the me- the, like how you think and feel when you're in those positions absolutely you take what you apply on the mat and you actually start applying it to areas of your life absolutely mm. yeah so it's like this yeah i think the thing you guys did so well was the relatability factor especially the timing of it because the industry just wasn't really that crazy here yet. no that's right like, nothing to at the time like i think one thing for us in business over the years is like there was a lot of rules around yoga, like yeah. and and sort of with Pilates too. Actually, it was you know um, you could only run a workshop if you taught yoga for four years. Things yeah. we were getting told things like this as young teachers, uh, instructors, yeah. and I, I've probably just never been one for rules. And I was like, well, <laughs> 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 I was like, who made up that rule? Who said that? It's and I was like, my my yoga teacher told me, and oh, really? her yoga teacher, you know, told yeah, me, yeah, and like yeah, people's yeah. response was like, but. Oh, well, that's what I got told at teacher training. I'm like, yeah. well, is it? Oh, I don't know if that's a rule. So, Tradition like, just for tradition's sake. that's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think our approach was like, forget about all the rules, yeah. and this is just such an amazing practice that can impact so many people. But at right now, it's intimidating. Yeah. There's all these rules. People think they have to be a certain way to yeah. a- access this practice, mm-hmm. which is like restricting the practice and yeah. so we were like no rules you know um like let's just make this really accessible and as mainstream as we can um 
And, you know, and I mean, I think it was really interesting for us when we first opened in Geelong. You know, I can remember guys coming with wearing their jeans to hot yoga in their je- denim jeans. They'll learn shirt. fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Like, just no one knew what that yoga was. But I think as a brand was like, you know, playful and fun yeah. and, and interesting that people did just walk in off the street kind of like I did, yeah. not knowing what they were getting. Um, but, you know, it's awesome. We've loved that. It's one thing we love about our, our community is that we've just got like such a range of ages and the, the demographic mix is, mm. is not normal for a lot of studios. Um, mm. You know, we definitely get a real range of, of people coming to Upstate, which is exactly what we always set out to do. But, um, you know, I think it's something we still really love to mm. see all the different ages and sizes and shapes and male, female, everyone's just in there. Yeah. I feel like... I just came up with a campaign idea for you guys. <laughs> Yoga for the people. <laughs> I know what it is. Yeah, totally. I, yeah. Um, I, my, from my, again, just purely using my experience, I and you know, I've got a bit of a marketing and business brain with this. I've noticed that it is the entry point to the yoga, the yoga, you know, world. Yes. And I felt that. Yes. <clears throat> from my from my experience, and it's a really important place to be in the space of like health, wellness, and spirituality. Mm-hmm. Because you can go very far down a path yep. and that's fine for those people that want yes. to go down that path. But a majority of people don't. Yep. Majority of people are yep. happy to dip their toes and live their lives. And so I feel like you guys have done it extremely well to deliver upstate for what it is. Through yes. the branding, through the products, through the, like, the way you do your classes, through the way you communicate. To be that entry point yes. for the people who, you know might otherwise not be exposed to this and then would have a worse quality of life because we all know how how good it is. Yes. So, no, it's yeah. a really valid point because I think one thing that's important in um, you know developing a business is the sooner you can accept that you can't be all things to all people, yeah, the that's better. Yeah, key thing. You know, because over the years we've certainly thought, oh, should we do advanced yoga or, or this yoga or, you know, so many things you can do, but you can't be all things to all people. You do have to stand for something. And yeah. so accessibility has always been a key, key pillar for us. Yeah. And it does mean that if people start their practice of yoga with us and they really want to develop their yoga practice more on a spiritual level or advanced level, they will most <coughs> likely move to another yeah. studio. I love that. That's great. You yeah. know, someone has found yoga and is going on to develop their practice in a deeper way yeah. that's not something you know that we can necessarily deliver but yeah. there's amazing other brands yeah. that do mm. so you know that's awesome um so i think we're really clear on who we are and not trying to be everything to everyone yeah because um, you're no one to nobody you're nothing to nobody 100%. you can do that that's right yeah. and um you know i think that's just allows you to be really focused yeah. and consistent and, and you know as we're talking about before building that community they know what to expect yeah. from us yeah. as well and they, they trust yeah and the trust right. is Absolutely. what you know the community comes from trust yeah because the that's relationships right it's yeah. just it's just you know it's one to many but yeah. it's still the it's same 100 percent. there's no trust there's no community there's no, i think it's like like the consistency thing plays such a big role because if you zoom out and just look at everything as a whole, there's a lot of inconsistencies in people's yeah. life. 100%. So if there is this one constant, whether it is a brand, whether yeah. it is a practice, whether it is, that is like the baseline of like when someone goes too far this way, they can come back to yoga. Yes. They can come back to that one brand that they just know is yeah. who they are. Yeah. And I think that's where the trust and the connection builds. Yeah. On any level, it doesn't just have to be, you know, yoga or anything like that, but we are so like there's just so much coming at us all the time that i think the brands that do really well are the ones that are like this is who we are yeah and like you said if you need xyz cool yeah finish. that's right go find yeah, XYZ. that's right that's, yeah that's awesome yeah it's not you yeah know, like just stay with not us trying forever. to hold everyone yeah yeah yeah, and I yeah. Think that's really really important because yeah. giving people the freedom to like grow and learn at their own pace like that's incredible yeah that's... absolutely and um i think to your point you know something you said then just really resonated in terms of you know people do go and do other things you know as um you were saying before come and go but you know a lot of people do come back to upstate you know and today i just did a class in geelong and i recognize this face and you know and she was like oh i came so many years ago you know and now i've just had kids and you know it's awesome to just get back into it yeah. um and so it is nice to be that place for people yeah. because um you know i think everyone has got so much going on in their lives and to know that there is this place that still is or you know it means something to them and yeah. is connected with them and they're still a part of even though it's been many years you know that um 
everyone sort of welcomes you back with open arms. I think a big part for us has been like um, a lot of our uh, instructors have been uh, members. Yeah. And we really it's try to... say that I'm uh, going down that path uh, soon. Right, so we'll you'll, be, you'll be teaching soon. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, look, and we love that. We really tr- we work, work to try to... Um, you know, bring up our instructors through our membership base because they already obviously love the brand, yeah. love the class, love the experience. So that's ideal for us to have our members come through. But it just really does build that community as well because people have been in doing classes with these people and next thing they're instructing them as well. Yeah. So it's it just adds a deeper layer yeah. to that sort of community and people continuing to connect with the brand. Yeah. yeah I love that. So, I, question for you, like going down to consistency, um, and on the business front, how, how have you gone about building a framework to maintain the consistency as you scale? Because that's yeah. a really challenging thing to maintain those one-to-one relationships, but also do it at scale. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, you know, when we first started, Sherelle and I were the only teachers, so that was really easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess we've, we're pretty process-driven people, both, both Sherelle and I. So as we started to onboard instructors, um, we developed a training and development program to um, you know, onboard them on and we're a big culture of feedback. Yeah. So um, we have like a six-week training program when someone onboards as an instructor um, and then they're in a six-week mentoring program getting feedback yeah. once a week, six weeks, and then they're in a continued um, feedback process that's like sort of once, to every, once every eight weeks roughly. Yeah. They'll um, get feedback. So I think that we've got a really... Um, like a well thought out and um, implemented process. Cause yeah. I think it's all good to have a, you know, the training manuals and development, but if they're not really fully understood or implemented, um, then, you know, then, yeah, like the, you can't have that consistency. Mm-hmm. But I think that, um, yeah, look, I, th- I think our training program is probably more in depth than other fitness businesses from what our instructors say who teach at other studios that um, Upstate's training development program is is pretty intense mm. and also the constant, you know, feedback. Um, so, yeah, I think we've just really developed a system that uh, we have sequence trainers um, across all the different modalities who train the instructors. So I think it's just, yeah, I guess it's a pretty well-oiled machine, our training yeah. program. That's so good really systems. Good systems. And, good and, roll and systems continuing, out. like, continued uh, feedback and yeah. mentoring because that's the key because you can be trained in something, but we can all go off in our own little directions. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say in um, the fitness industry that it's not that common to get consistent feedback. Yeah. Um, so that is a big part of our program. Um, that is obviously an investment to make of yeah. times and staff to continually give, you know, I think we've got over 100 instructors, continually uh-huh. give everyone feedback. But it's something we'll continue to invest in because it's, you know, it's why we have such a consistent experience. Hmm. Um, you know, I mean, uh, uh, today when I did a class, I was thinking, you know, there's, it was a brand new instructor. Hmm. Um, and so we've gone from where we were the only teachers to then we were training the teachers training and the now, <laughs> now, and then training the trainers, whereas now I just don't even do that. So, yeah. you know, I get to go into a class, uh, meet a teacher for the first time who I haven't met before and do their class. And I'm like, oh my God, it's That's so on brand. It's just like every single yeah. part of it was awesome, you know, which is amazing to me that, yeah. you know, we've been able to just develop people in those roles who are now training because it really reflects on the, on the trainers who are training the instructors as well yeah. um, to give them that growth and opportunity. And they love it. You know, I think, um, I think that's been a big thing for us as we've developed our business was when I stepped into the fitness industry um, coming from brand and marketing was a predominantly female, to find a predominantly female industry um, that were largely casuals and contractors. Mm. And, in kind many like cases, not industry, well that paid, charging. you know. And for us, we were like, oh, you know, if we are going to stay in this industry, we have to make sure that we can create career pathways for women. Yeah. Um, and as an instructor, you can't teach a whole heap of classes because you get too exhausted. Yeah. So to be full-time, you have to teach and have another role. Yeah. Um, and this is where we've created these roles of uh, sequence trainers is what we re- call them. Um, so they instruct plus then they train yeah, instructors yeah, yeah. and then you've also you see you get a lot of people on their actual 
admin side. I yeah, absolutely. I'll send an email yes. and I'll see one of like, yeah. like May, for example, yeah. flies. That's like, right. Ah, nice. <laughs> you just told me yoga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell us two things that people know about you and one thing that they genuinely don't. Oh, goodness. Okay, two things that people know about me. Well, I think, um, gosh, most people would know that I'm a risk taker. Um, that I, they don't from that story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm always, you know, and, and probably that I'm hardworking. I think those two things most people would know. Um, that I'm prepared to give kind of anything a go and not yeah. scared to fail. Yeah. Um, it's a key thing, I think. Yeah, and fail all the time and I'm happy to talk about when things don't go to plan. Yeah. Um, so I think people would know that I'm a risk taker. Um, what don't they know about me? Oh, gosh, that's a tricky one. Um, probably, I mean, maybe they do know this. I was going to say, like, you know, I guess I have... Um, I guess I've, I I'm a, see myself as a lifelong learner. I really love mm. learning new things. Mm. I like change. Mm. Um, and I think that's probably just something, perhaps it is, perhaps I do know that. But, um, <laughs> You're going to have to dig deeper, I think. Yeah, <laughs> go deeper. Oh, gosh. I'm an open book, so it's really hard to think. Yeah. What's the question? Because I think yeah, it's curious go for it. with this. It's so random. But what did you want to be when you were younger? Well, I actually wanted to, so we grew up on a dairy farm right? Um, and I wanted to be a travel agent. Yeah, which I just, and there was no, you know, even when we did work experience, there was no travel agents anywhere near us mm-hmm. to even yeah. go and do work experience at, but that's what I wanted to do. So I think travel was just a big interest from a young age. Yeah. Um, I think growing up on a, you know, in a really small community, um, my school only had, you know, 30 kids and most of them I was related to. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that just I'd always wanted to explore yeah. and travel and see new things and meet new people and discover things. So, I, yeah. I always, I, the reason why I ask that, that it's something I always ask people, especially people that are always like, oh, I just feel lost in my life. Um, I was like, what did you want to be when you were younger? Because there's elements of things that you wanted to do when you were younger that like that little inner child in you tries to seek out as you get older. And I find like even for myself, like storytelling was always a big thing that I wanted to do when I was a kid. Yeah. And it took me about 24 years to return back to that. Hilarious. And go, that's what you actually enjoy doing. Yes. So follow that. Yeah. Follow that curiosity. And as long as you're doing something that's along or aligns with that. So for you, like exploring different avenues, taking risks and all that. Yeah. I always find it interesting because I don't think people realize how much what they're currently doing, especially if it's something that they feel like they're aligned with and it's their purpose, plays into parts of what they wanted to be when they were a child. Maybe not directly, like yes, you're not a travel agent right. right now. Yeah. But you know, there's parts where it's like, yeah, those little parts as a kid you hold on to, like, yeah. oh maybe one day when you're an adult you'll finally realise that this is the thing that you want to do. Like follow that. For sure. Now that's awesome. And I think oh you know, I think for young people just even my nieces and other, you know, young of our instructors, like I think there's such a pressure to know what you want to do, you know. Right. And um, you were saying that. <laughs> like I still don't. <laughs> and, you know, I'm um, about to turn 50 and, you know, some days I think I still don't know what I want to do. But like <laughs> it's a, this I think pressure it's a yeah. that you feel like you have to know what you want yeah. to do is is – you know, I think a real big challenge for young people. And I think it's really good to not try to have a title of what you want to do. Like, yeah. because, you know, especially now, like roles and businesses that um, will be around in in the future, like we don't even know what they are now. Yeah, yeah. Um, things are changing so rapidly that, and you'll, you know, there's so much change that people will make by the time they reach that point. But I think it's just, as you said, like to think about what your interests are. Yeah. Mm. As opposed to like necessarily the title of a job. And these are like, things that like spark your soul on yeah, fire. Yeah. And the things where you find that like overwhelming sense of joy, that's where I'm like, that's where you've got to start. Absolutely. You need yeah. to start in a place where whatever it is that you're doing, yeah. if you feel like you can find yourself in a flow state, 
it probably means that's sort of down the path you're meant to be going because yeah. that is where you just feel like, oh, everything's going to like super easy. Yeah, absolutely. Like, this feels good. And also just do things, you know, because yeah. like take the jobs. I mean, I, I'm a <laughs> big believer in saying, like saying yes to things because, you know, I've taken jobs that I wasn't sure about and it turns out they weren't the right positions. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I know that's not the path. Yeah. Um, so saying yes and just not overthinking it, like just do things because it's a process of elimination yeah. um, and you'll soon work out the direction you want to go in. And there's no nothing wrong with starting something and not pursuing it if it's not the direction Absolutely. you want to go in. I think, um, you know, I think there's a stigma around that as well, whether it's starting uni and not finishing or all those sorts mm. of things that a lot of young people feel that pressure for. You know, it's, it's okay to start something and not do it. Um, and I guess think about like sometimes it's the things we feel we should do something yeah. mm. as opposed to wanting to do mm. something. So sort of separating that out as well. Like what's the external voice telling you to do something from you know, your friends, your family, 100%. Like the society as a whole and what do you actually want to Absolutely. do? Absolutely. That's why I say to people, like I get a lot of young people always asking me like, what am I supposed to do? I don't want to go to uni, but my parents are telling me to go. And I'm like, your 20s are these magical years yeah. where you get to royally screw up as much <laughs> yeah. as you want. Yeah. You're young enough to know better. So you're old enough to know better, but young enough to still not have to actually care. Because yes. when you say, oh, I'm just like 25, everyone's like, oh, you're still young. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so for sure. It's fine. And Absolutely. then you hit 30 and it's like, shit, I need to get my life together. But it's like, well, do you? Do you? Yeah. 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 Look, I think, oh, 100%, I agree. I think that there's too much pressure on thinking about what mm. you should, you know, what you should do and having this all mapped out. Mm. Um, you know, I, a friend had given me this quote one day that was, um, write your purpose in pen and your path in in pencil mm. oh i love that and i've always liked that because i think you know life is not a ladder that you just climb up mm. it is you know more it's like, like one of those yeah it's <laughs> like you're gonna go sideways you're gonna go backwards you're gonna do a few somersaults in the middle of like things that are so unexpected you didn't see coming like it is not linear so you know as soon as you realize that there's just going to be all these different directions that are going to happen. But as long as, you know, again, it really comes back to what we talked about at first, having that purpose or that mm -hmm. mission, as long as you're staying true to your core values, yeah. it um, really doesn't matter what direction it kind of takes. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that curiosity that yeah. if you can hold on to that, Absolutely. it eliminates the whole attachment of like, this is how it was supposed to look like. Yes. And if it's Agreed. not that way, then it's wrong. It's, yeah. like, it's not yeah. wrong. It's yes, just that's right. not that way. Yeah. And that's yeah. fine. That's right. Go, go right or go left. Yeah. Like just keep, keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Mm. Yeah, the, um, I was just going to make a comment as well that, um, as I've gotten older, you know, I've had my say parents as a pedestal of like, truth yes and as i've gotten older i've realized that they are extremely fallible as well that's right they have no idea what is going on yeah. <laughs> and then i like extrapolate that to everyone else nobody has any fucking clue yeah. what is happening yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's just like it's people like play the game at a certain level they get to a reasonable skill set of understanding at that level and generally they go to the next level and, yeah, then, yeah. and so everyone's constantly playing in this space Absolutely. of not really knowing what they're doing yeah. but just rolling with it and again rolling with the punches and trying things and being able to fail and ideally not blowing up the house at any yes. moment because yeah. if you die you can't start again yeah. So I think that's yeah. the key thing I've noticed. For sure. And um, I, I think didn't, like for me, I think COVID kind of exposed that for a lot of people yeah. because, you know, for the for a lot of, you know, especially people who worked in perhaps bigger organisations and things, they saw, you know, their boss on Zoom with kids going running through the background <laughs> and like, Humanizer. you know, we're all, we're all in this situation that none of us have experienced before yeah. and, and it, it was very it. uncertain. Mm -hmm. And I think it like for, for a lot of people, it just, everyone was in the same, I guess, situation and humanized like that no one's got to figure it figured out. No. Nah. And everyone's got a home life that's chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I think it just brought that, you know, to, re to reality for a lot of people to see, you know, see potentially, especially bosses and, you yeah. know, people in their workplace at home coping 
with the situation that was unfolding that no one knew where it was quite going. Yeah. yeah. We're all human. Yeah, We're that's all it. To... We're all just making it up. We're yeah, all making yeah, it up. Yeah, that's like, it. So nobody that's has it. any idea. And the people that sit there and are like, I got it sorted. It's yeah. like, you definitely <laughs> yeah. got it sorted. Yeah. You're, not sorted, You're not trying hard yeah, enough. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I love that. I've got, I've got a question for you. You, you noticed that, or well, you made a point about not knowing the direction, but as long as you've got your purpose, it's okay. Um, for those younger people out there, from your experience, what advice would you have around looking and finding a purpose? Yeah, I guess I think um, I think one is just as a young person, like knowing you you were never stuck. You know what that, do you mean? like I think sometimes you know, especially chatting to younger people, it feels like. They are stuck in whatever position they're currently in. Oh, yeah. 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 Everything is mostly and a choice. Yeah. There's, there is always a choice. There is you know? always a choice. And yeah. it might be a choice that you don't even want to make. There might be some hard work involved. or yeah. um, So I think knowing there is always a choice and not to just feel stuck and stay mm. in a situation. Yeah. There is always a choice to get out of it somehow. Like to it choose might your not. hard. I like that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... So I think that's the first thing of like, just not, you know, don't ever feel stuck because you're not. Hmm. And then that, that, I've noticed when I've spoken to people and said something like that, it triggers some people. Yeah. Uh, some people are like, you don't know my story. Like yeah. you, I am stuck. And it's like, no, yeah, you're stuck because your mind is stuck. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And I mean, I think it's, it's a challenging one, isn't it? It because, is. Because um, you can, like, you know, I've had times in my life where you feel a bit stuck. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, what's my next? What is the next move yeah. here? And I think sometimes it's because the next move is actually you. There's fear around yeah. the it's next the move. Discomfort of yeah, it might be backwards from so, where you are now. Yeah, and yeah. I think that um, yeah, I guess it's just it's okay to step into something that is not comfortable yeah. or potentially you know a step backwards. Yeah. Um, to move out of a situation. Yeah. And then go forward eventually again. So I think for young people really just like, you know, just that self-confidence. You have got it. You've got it. You know, um, we've all got a great capacity mm. to do amazing things, it you know, with the mind. and that mindset and self-belief, you know, and mm. like everyone can do incredible things if they sort of shut out all the noise yeah. and just give things a go, yeah. you know, and there's nothing, what's there to lose, you know? As long as you don't blow up the house. Yeah. <laughs> don't blow up the house. Yeah, don't blow That's up the house. Right. It's funny, um, I'm, here, I'm thinking of like a parallel here with what you're saying uh, and yoga. I've noticed as I've gone through my yoga practice, uh, there's a key thing that, that yoga focuses on during, you know, in the heat, it's uncomfortable. Yes. You are in positions that are uncomfortable and it's always maintain your calm breath. Yeah. Maintain that, sh you know, that shallow breath to the yes. top of your, what is it, top of your mouth? Yeah. What do you call yeah. it? Um, Ujjayi breath. Yeah, Ujjayi yeah. breath. Um, because that's your center point. Yeah. And I've noticed throughout my life now, as I'm getting into different, you know, situations that aren't fitness or like health or yoga related, yeah. that it's the same feeling of discomfort. Yes. And it's, I can come back. I'm now. I've now developed the skills through yeah. yoga and through meditation to come back to the breath, yeah. come back to the core, and sit in that discomfort better and better as Absolutely. time goes on. Yeah, and that's really powerful because I think all the tough things in your life are going to have elements of discomfort, and it's as though you need to become comfortable in that discomfort, and you'll be able to then have a better life because you know you're. The quality of life is like all the tough conversations you're going to yeah, have. that's right. You know, all those moments where you've pushed it a bit further than you might have otherwise and you've got to a point that you couldn't have gotten to otherwise. And it's the same techniques. Yeah. It's really the same techniques. So, yeah. For sure. I think learning to get comfortable in discomfort is just a tool for life. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And yoga is such a great way to learn that practice because you were constantly – being cued to connect to your breath. Yeah. And You're like screw you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that um I think that, you know, is a practice that you just take with you for life yeah. once you've discovered it. Yeah. That's no, awesome. You've been able to develop that in your practice. Oh, it's it's you know, you guys have created that environment for me to be able to go down that path. So it makes me so thank happy. You.
<laughs> Speaking of things that make you happy, like what has got you excited right now in your life? Oh, wow. Uh, what has got me excited? Uh, look, I think lots of things. I guess the business is um, is about to go on a whole, a whole <laughs> journey of its own. Do you want to elaborate at all? Or? So, yeah. <laughs> so we've, um, we've recently taken on investment from um, Cotton On. I heard about this. Yes. <laughs> Uh, which you know it was a, um, huge, a big decision, <laughs> yeah, huge. for sure. And I guess you know we we're saying at the start we've we've always had you know big dreams, and we've we've over the years thought about how we can continue to make a bigger impact. Mm. Um, and our business, by its nature, in bricks and mortar, is is an expensive business mm. to mm. scale. Mm. Uh, so quite a few years ago, probably three or four years ago, we looked into franchising because we're getting contacted all the time, Mm. like, you know, emails coming through all the time about, would you franchise upstate? I'd love to run one. So we went through a process of really looking into franchising and, um, you know, there's good reasons to franchise and there's reasons, reasons not for us. Um, you know, a a key reason to franchise is it can scale you quickly, Mm. um, without the capital investment. Um, but for us, because we were, you know, had such a focus on our mission and the community, mm. we didn't feel confident about franchising and still being able to deliver that. Mm. So we decided we really wanted to stay privately owned. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so then, um, Cotton On actually came to us, which was, uh, a surprise. <laughs> and um seems like a good partnership in my head great makes sense. great partnership look we've had um good relationships with a lot of the exec team at cotton on for years a lot of um them practice at upstate they know upstate mm-hmm. and so we've had a, a great relationship with them and taught classes out there so um you know and we'd had conversations about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to grow um with them so when they um you know put forward some conversations around being coming on as um, an investor, we um, mm-hmm. jumped at it pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chill. And you were like, yeah. yeah. Well, it makes uh, sense, right? Yeah. I mean, no, they've got like sure. three thousand stores across the globe. Yes, yeah. it's, it's similar, similar approaches to a lot of things. For really. sure, and I think for us, it just um, you know it came down to I guess really being on board with our mission. Yeah. Um, because we do invest, as we talked about before, a lot in the training and development and the feedback and the mentoring, which is, you know, is an expense to, a, you know, a business that perhaps could be argued out that you want the savings to be made here. So we really, you know, had great conversations to talk about why, what we wanted to um, maintain mm-hmm. and ensure that we could mm-hmm. scale with this investment mm-hmm. into the people. Yeah. Um, and they're a hundred percent on board with that. They're very people first, um, business, you know, company themselves. So mm-hmm. I think aligning on kind of the mission and how we would grow and how we would scale was the, was, I guess, what got the deal over the line. Yeah. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. Exciting. So that's exciting. A um, small, small town kind of people <laughs> moving in the big world. <laughs> From a dairy farm. Yeah. That's right. I love yeah. it. I love it. Sky's the limit as we no, see. No, it really hey. is. It, yeah. it honestly it is yeah. and i think that like you touched on the advice to young people when you can break through that barrier of the box of seeing like oh it's it can only be this way because yes. this is the way i've been told to do it always yes. mm-hmm. the world just becomes this like limitless like ball of opportunity and possibility Absolutely. and i think when you start to attach that curiosity thing yes. to things it becomes less about like um oh but what if this goes wrong and it's like mm. But like, what if it also goes completely right? Like, what if Cotton On come on board and decide that they, you know, like, it's all about that shift in thinking and going back to yoga. I think yoga grants you that space and that clarity to just pause for a second before the thoughts start going haywire and going, well, wait, like, what if it doesn't, what if it goes like my way? What if it, you know, and then if you get into the whole layer of like, manifesting and on the subconscious and conscious level of it all it's all just like uh, this loop and i think when you crack the loop you're not going to be a master at it straight away but i think it's just it's rewarding to then be able just to look at things and just see opportunity in things as opposed to the challenges straight off the get-go yeah because as soon as you see the challenges you're not even going to start yeah no i think it's having that growth mindset isn't it because um you know, I think when I think about what does excite me personally outside the business, it is that like 
what there's so much to do there's so much yeah, to do. Yeah, like, you know and so exciting. Uh, there's places to go there's people to meet yeah. um you know and i think potentially for me as you do get older that like i'm hit about to turn 50 in a few weeks so like what are my 50s well what's that going to be defined by like i think as you get older too you feel like i've, I've got a big i want to create an impact mm. there's so much more that i want to do that it's like let's go you know no time mm. to waste the future's Absolutely. you know not certain and the sky is the limit mm. and so when you come from a framework of just seeing opportunity just sending it <laughs> just, you know <laughs> it's just um you know it's it is exciting because you do think of all the, you know, all the opportunities and things that you, how you want to make an impact on, you know, personally with your family and, you know, I've got children, mm. how you want to Im- make an impact in, in their lives and who you want to be to them um, and then for the business as well. So I ask, um, does it change kind of when you have children in a sense of you feel like you have to lead the way more to show them what is possible? Yeah, good question. Um, look, I feel like for me, I've, I take role modelling for my children quite seriously Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in that it's important to me that they grow up to be people who are really accepting of other people who want to um, be a part of a community and also that they grow up relatively gender bias free because Mm -hmm. I think in my generation uh, certainly it was not the case yeah. uh, growing up on a dairy farm and in that sort of community yeah, um, big, there's big a lot of just gender biases and so yeah. I think yeah. it's important you know for me to have my children see that you can have a dream and go for it yeah. and that it doesn't matter whether it's mum or dad or whoever mm. it is who's earning the income that yeah. um, there is just not a bias there that they just think that's normal to grow up yeah. with. It's not a limitation. That's like right. I, I'm asking because <laughs> oh, I'm 27. I'm not in a relationship and children are very far from me, but yeah. I keep finding myself thinking about, so for a long time it was thinking about like my inner child and what I wanted to do. But now as I'm getting older, I'm finding myself thinking more about my future kids. Like mm-hmm. what, example would i want to set yeah. for them set for them to show them like yeah i did all these things because i believed that yeah. i could yeah and you, you no. it's, it's no different you can too 100 percent. self-belief is just something that i i really try to instill yeah. in the kids because i am a big believer that if you believe in yourself that you will do things that you thought maybe weren't possible absolutely um that's and the beginning, right? that's right and i you know i <laughs> You, you know, you do have other people in your life who don't have that self-belief mm-hmm. um, and how challenging that things can be for them to progress or move forward with. So I think really trying to instill and, I guess, role model that self-belief is, like, really important to me. And, I, I mean, I think it is to most parents, no doubt. Yeah, um, But no one gives you a handbook on these things. How, to, <laughs> how do I actually do that? Maybe that'll be the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> it is a guide for raising children. Goodness me, I'm not sure we'll go there. But um, <laughs> I think, you know, I think role modelling is the best way, yeah. more so than... It's living by example. Yeah, that's right. Like, you know, yeah. I just think I, I've now gotten to a place where I'm sick of talking and trying to convince people. I'm like, you know, I'm yeah. just going to show you. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Go do it. Yeah, that's true. And I think especially yeah. with children, they don't want to be lectured. No one wants yeah. you know, to hear the backstory, really. They you know, they they see and take in more than you realise. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I think just, yeah, living, living and breathing it. Is, yeah. is the way that um, actually my son just uh, had to do a project which he um, brought home which was a leadership project it was who would you have around your table and he had me oh. yeah and he had, they had to put wine and he had courageous I love that you know just not something that I would have thought that he necessarily associated with yeah. me so it's just interesting how much they are observing observing yeah. and I said to him oh courageous and he said yeah will you you do you do courageous things all the time, Mum. Okay, and I, I guess that. I am a risk taker, but I just hadn't put it in that context. That context, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, he's yeah. yeah. How did you feel in that moment? Oh, awesome! Because like the rest of the people around the table were mainly basketball players. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, this is important. Who did he have as basketball players? Oh, uh, he had. Um, oh, who did he have? I think he had Shark on there, and then oh, it, uh, Michael Jordan. Yeah, who else cool. did he have on there? He had. Um, 
Or some box, bo- a boxer as well. I can't remember who else he had on there, but really, I, and mom. He had, yeah, <laughs> Einstein was on there. That's right. On there. Everyone That's else that. was really quite high, high profile. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, there's uh, there's two things I've thought of as we were talking that I'd like to kind of mention was with uh, the taking risks and believing in yourself. There's something that I came across a while ago where it was like. The downside is zero, but the upside is unlimited. Mm -hmm. So in the existing kind of framework of human society where you're not going to get, you're not going to most likely die, you're not going to have any, um, (laughs) any like saber-toothed tigers coming for you (laughs) if you're making mistakes, you're not going to get... You know, you know, they used if you had a debt and you couldn't pay your debt, you used to get killed. (laughs) This stuff does not happen anymore. Yeah. It's it's created an environment in society that rewards risk takers. It rewards people who understand the the upside value versus like the lower downside risk. And so when you when you understand that and then you put efforts into achieving things and, and make and shaping the world around you with that in mind. You might fail a bunch of times, but every time you fail, you get better. Yeah. And every time you get better, your steps, chance to improve gets better. And there's this, this Einstein quote where it's like, uh, I haven't had 3,000 fails. I've had 3,000 steps closer to yes. success. Mm, yeah. Mm. And then the second piece is, uh, and this is something that I like didn't think about until quite recently. And when I thought about it, it blew my mind. It's like everything you see in the world from these high rises to these these massive cities to people going to space to just everything yeah. began with one human being and an idea. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, we're no different. Yeah, Maybe that's yeah, right. there's some, you know, skill set levels that some people have better than others, but there's a, it's a big wide world out there. There's yeah. a lot of opportunity and a good idea with effort and time can lead to things that you would never dream of yeah it's just you have to keep going with it yeah no i think it all does start with one once has to start with one small step doesn't it but i mean i think one thing that i probably in terms of just starting a business and um and the goals of that i guess one thing that I've, i've thought about in in talking to probably people in yoga and pilates industry who have super passionate about that modality and then have been ambitious to start their own business or studio and it doesn't make a profit. Yeah. Mm. And I think that when I think about empowering young people, especially women, financial independence is a really important thing Mm. To ensure that you have, because without that financial independence, at some point, things are going to become challenging. Mm. Absolutely, you have to make decisions that are money versus mission. Yeah, so I think I think there's such a uh, movement in side hustle and entrepreneurship, which is awesome, um, but without some uh, without ensuring that it is profitable, mm. then I guess. I've got a bit of a concern around that for people yeah. because I think a lot of people pursue a passion that is yeah is not profitable and then over time that will is creates other limitations you know sure. and dishearten I think the disheartening of like that sense of failure or like people being like I told you so sticks and then it's like you're having to do this uphill battle even more so to try and move away from that and I for think sure and confidence... I, I think as well just talking about like yeah. being a profitable business mm. for females is is still not something that's overly talked about Why? yeah i don't know i just feel like i feel like that's the case now maybe maybe <clears> it's not maybe it's not but my experience is that especially when we first started in opening a yoga studio uh, the stigma around a yoga studio being a profitable business. Yeah, mm. that's that's the mentality that I get a lot in the music industry yeah. as well. It's like there's this negative bias to doing having success. Yeah, and I think it's just something that I feel like needs to be challenged. Yeah. And for us as you know, um, female business 
person that I would really encourage, you know, people to engage in conversation around mm. that because, um, you know, for our goal to create these career pathways for females in the fitness industry is to give them um, opportunities of other working in other positions in our business. Mm. If we weren't a profitable business, we could never engage a full-time team. Um, we we would be participating in an industry that is predominantly casual and contract staff, mm. which has no security for people that you can't get a loan for a house or a car mm. or anything else mm. when you're a yeah, casual, yeah. Um, you know, maternity leave, um, all these, you know, other, um, I guess, challenges that face the casual workforce. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it was really important that, um, you know, especially in the industry of yoga and Pilates, where it can be a bit frowned upon to talk about profitability, mm-hmm. is just something that I think should be challenged because we should be empowering females who are, you know, predominantly a lot of the yoga and Pilates um, business owners to be as profitable as they can be because they're going to raise the bar. They're going to be able to pay their staff, make them full-time, make the wages higher, Mm. create career pathways. And, you know, I think as an industry, it's just something that we kind of... Shy away from. Yeah. Mm. And almost like, you know, I think for me when we first started was like, not embarrassed is not the right word, but like... Is it it a piece of like shame? I think, I'm not sure it's shame either. I think it's just like a little disconnect somehow between talking about I want to create a yoga and Pilates studio and I want it to be profitable. Like well, yeah. just I, not a conversation you like, have. What do you think it is? Like let's actually, because yeah. I'm very curious about this kind of piece. Um, I think judgment for me is like the, the people's judgment of what they they think that might mean. Um, like what what's under the judgment? Like why, why what's, yeah, what's, what's following on um, from the judgment? Like where does that lead to? What's the core? Yeah. I don't think it's shame. I'm just struggling to put my finger on what it is. But, um, yeah, I guess I'm not sure if there's something around, yeah, that profitability that's like... I think money as a whole just like... And it doesn't matter what industry it is, just for females. Not talked about. It's just not. No. Like, yeah. it's, no. it's just something that it's not... Because it's not supposed to be the way. Like, sure. it's ridiculous, but... I feel like on a psyche level within females to talk about that would be stepping out of line almost yeah. like yeah it's ridiculous it's like crazy. saying it is ridiculous For sure. it's no. stupid like yeah. it's actually dumb but I think you're right be- I think that you know working in my career before you know a guy would more commonly shout out about his salary his or car, his package his or his car, wage yeah. or what his goals were in his earnings, mm-hmm. whereas traditionally, I guess, I don't. I think a lot of females didn't a lot of the time because there was a discrepancy between what males were paid and females were paid too. Do you think, because I sometimes think about this, do you think it's also um, like fear of what other women would say? Because I sometimes find as much as we're in this culture of like empowering women and women are also the first to tear women down. Yeah. Like sometimes like I there've been instances where I've just observed people or women in business and someone's doing something that's a little bit different out of the ordinary, you know, their business model might be whatever, ex- exotic dancing and they're pushing that on Instagram or whatever yeah. and it's becoming a business. They're selling workshops, they're selling whatever. And you look through the comments and I'm just seeing a man would never like shame the woman for doing that. They probably don't care, but it's women. It's other women. Yeah, who and maybe of, it's like I have seen that too. And I wonder yeah. if that's a platform as well, because yeah. I think a lot of the social media platforms, you know, it probably is more commentary. I mean, I just know from our, our Instagram yeah. following, it's predominantly more female yeah. uh, audience and connection and comments. Yeah. Um, it's so just whether interesting that influences or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause then that's where the fear sort of begins. Yeah, that's like right. I won't talk about this because cause we talk someone about might come at me. Yeah. yeah. It could, like it, yeah. it could be, I just, it's something, yeah. something I observe and I just like sometimes think like, wow, we're in this like stage where it's all about female empowerment and obviously not everybody does this, but then there's a lot of times where I'm just like, I'm not really empowering people if we're yeah, like crapping sure. on them on Instagram just because they're doing something or talking about, yeah. you know, profits and whatnot. Yeah, that's right. Keep and so I, Yeah, keep talking. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, no, I think that's something that, um, you know, I'd love to, you know, see more of or encourage more of is the conversation around, you know, following your purpose and creating this mission-driven business, but also like the financial 
financials around that mm. and empowering people to, you know, have a profitable business so they can set up for a life that they love or they can do whatever they, you know, choose to do with that. But um, I think it's just something in our industry that's like still behind the curtains a little bit. Mm. So I think uh, there's a couple of things I thought of is that idea of like when you're on an aeroplane and they say put your own yeah, oxygen mask on before helping others, you need to be strong. You need to have a strong foundation before you can help others. Otherwise, you get dragged under. So I think that yeah. that links with financials as well. And then the other idea that like that I was going to ask you was like going around this conversation, how do you possibly lift other women? It sounds like it might be a women to women thing. I don't know. I, it's not a world that I'm yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, a part yeah. of, so I'm probably naive on this. But like, how can what can you do to lift other women out of the like that idea that it is problematic to I, talk about? I it. think just starting conversations and. Um, you know, we, we're we pretty open in our business and talking about our business. Um, and so I think inviting that conversation in and, yeah. and challenging some of the thinking as well. So if you are having a conversation with um, someone around their business, especially, you know, ch- just challenging them to ha- how they're thinking about it and, and in, you know, I guess just opening up the conversation really. Um, which, you know, I think most people are really open to once – once you've put it forward to them, like they do come into the conversation and I've had great experiences with other business people who um, once I've opened up a little bit, they've responded really well. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's interesting um, because I think the conversation piece is the piece that um, is the most important. Yeah. It's like breaking through the barrier of like, what, like you said, what other people might say, the judgment piece and whatever. But I think what's also important is those people that do stand up and do start the conversations also pave the way to show other people nothing bad actually happens. Yeah, that's right. When you're first to go, like yeah. you literally open up the floodgates yeah, right. for that's people right. to be like, "Oh, look, they're doing, yeah, they're doing that thing, and they're alive still. Nothing yeah. tragic is happening to them." Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. It's a bigger conversation. It is a bigger conversation. Yeah. yeah. But they have and to start somewhere, That's right. right. Yeah. So, so look, it's awesome we touched on it today because it's not not something I've probably talked about um, because it probably hasn't come up and yeah. I've not thought to necessarily bring it up. Um, mm. But it, I think it is something, you know, for a lot of entrepreneurs to just reflect on and, and mm-hmm. start the conversation on. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, going, going into Upstate uh, specifically, and you're more than welcome to kind of Toe, however you need to toe. Um, like you, you made mention that a lot of the health and fitness and yoga studios is like don't actually make any money. What, what do you think credited Upstate as a business to buck that trend? Yeah. Um. I mean, I think I think a lot do do are profitable. Okay. <laughs> You're all broke. <laughs> Just want to clarify. Um, I think a lot are profitable, but I think a lot find it challenging to reach profitability. So yeah. in those those early stages of mm. like, and possibly because I came from a business background that um, when we very first started, we you know did set goals and targets, financial goals and targets for the business as well. Mm. Whereas I think probably because it's a passion driven yeah. business entry point that is started from a base of I love yoga, I love Pilates and I'll open a studio. They're mm. just not... The planning, the analysts, you know, the analytics of looking at, at all of your financials is lacking a little. So take it seriously from yeah, the hobby space. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think you know, we spend. Uh, you know, I now do not teach in the business or um, train our instructors anymore. So we spend a lot of time just analysing the data of our business. Mm. Um, and you know, I think that like everyone needs to do that as much as you, it is. You know, your passion. You have to also. It is a business. Mm. And there's business acumen you should be applying mm-hmm. from day one to ensure that you're setting yourself up for profitability. What, yeah. kind, what kind of like metrics do you look at like in your business? Oh gosh, all sorts of stuff. So, I mean, just, you know, we've got different types of memberships, um, attendance per class. Obviously we've got different class styles. So, you know, what's the capacity of each different class style? Yeah. How are they each performing? Um, and then like just all your normal profit and loss, all your expenses, yeah. you know. Um, are you but, heavy on socials and like social interaction and stuff or do you kind do you know of what? Not so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't get too bogged down in that. 
Yeah. Um, I guess we see, you know, socials is like obviously an important part mm. of our marketing, but it's it's just a small part. Yeah. Um, so probably don't and put too much analysis around that. Yeah. Um, just more only in terms of what's what's engaging, yeah. you know. Um, but on a day-to-day basis, we're always looking at um, at the performance of each studio. Yeah. And they're all really different, you know, because um, some studios, for example, you know, yoga's really popular and others it might not be. Mm. So it's a constant, like, looking at the daily performance of each studio and then adjusting things as we need to. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Oh, going, back to, going back to kind of something for you again. Um, yeah. We made mention that, you know, you're turning 50, and when's your birthday by the way it's people? like in two weeks i think hey we'll have your birthday for two weeks for four oh, december. December. Ah, december so i was like oh my god imagine party. you're doing the same thing <laughs> yeah, well, ah. well happy birthday guys ah. yeah thank you thank you <laughs> um so you know you may mention that you're turning 50 and you want to leave a legacy like who is the person that you want to be in 10 years time like do you have that vision in place of who you want to be and and how you want to be feeling and what do you what do you want to be doing for the world gosh uh no i don't have a set vision of um i i don't think i you know i, I guess who i want to be is fundamentally still who i am today yeah. um regardless of what happens in the next 10 years i'd like to think that i am fundamentally still the person I am now Mm. um and yeah look I think for me the next 10 years will be you know a lot about I've got the kids are coming to teenage years so there's just going to be a lot of uh, attention on on them in those you know really formative years of their life Mm -hmm. um so I know look I just hope in 10 years that I'm still um getting to classes at Upstate every day Wherever that might be, LA, sure. LA perhaps. Maybe. <laughs> or Tulum. I mean, I went to Tulum and that was a pretty wild. All right, place. Tulum's fine too. I'll, I'll help. I've got yeah, connections in yeah. Tulum now. When Perfect. you want to do upstate Tulum, so we're we'll doing upstate classes in Tulum every day. Yeah. And um, like just just being surrounded by good people, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, when I think about when I'm, you know, most happiest, it's the people you've got around you, you know. Yeah. So as long as I've got good people around me and I'm moving every day in some yeah. shape or form then life's going to be good. Well, you've got your, the pillars that you have to work for, your health, your relationships, and your mindset. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't use money and you can't use anything else yes. but your own personal work yeah. and like effort to get mm. yep. to those good outcomes. Absolutely. So. Do you think as you get older, it gets like simpler in terms of like the little joys in life? Like I think you, so. Yeah. I think you really appreciate things more. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean why is that i don't know but like i guess because you're still very busy these you know these yeah. years are busy in the 40s of raising kids and building businesses and things but i think you do really appreciate small things mm. and probably just a bit more uh reflection on on how you're living each day yeah mm. absolutely um having that much life experience and enough ups and downs and challenges and good times and bad times to know that um Every day is, you know, is going to be different, but the only constant is change. Yeah. yeah and I think it's... the only constant or the only thing you're really guaranteed in life is that one day it's going to, like, it's yeah, going to end. That's yeah. right. That's it. Yeah. And if I can help it, I'm going to be a cyborg. <laughs> 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 we're getting close. You, you were we're really getting close. <laughs> we're getting close. Love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, right now, my little my little crazy uh, thing that I'm working on is, is I've got a continuous glucose monitor, and oh. I'm curious about what my blood glu- glucose okay. levels are at, and yeah. I'm like testing eating, and I'm testing exercise. I mean, and I'm fine. The results, <laughs> are the results good? Or? I mean, I'm only like a day or two. Okay, in. yeah. So yeah, um, but yeah, like one of my one of my friends is a type one diabetic, yes. and I'm like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's this. I'm like, cool. So now it's funny we've we've been talking about it and we've been kind of, I've been trying to like send him ideas on things like, yeah. and I'm like, I want to try it. And I've like, you can, you can share your glucose levels to other people for like, just in case you say diabetic and, and yeah. things are like yes. problematic oh, okay. Okay. for the yeah. actual yeah. diabetics. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I shared it with him and yeah. now we're kind of just like going back and on forth on ideas levels. and like, like he's, I said to mine, like, dude, mine's going up while I'm working out. And he's like, dude, this is what mine looks like today. And it's like, oh, like, oh geez, yeah. that's like my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> uh, Let's so, not go there. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, moving on. Um, so now 
What has a, what challenge has there been for you that you thought you'd never overcome but overcame? What was one of those moments where you're like, this is fucked. There's no <laughs> chance. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm sure there's been so many. Um, look, I think the challenges of COVID were mm. the hardest challenges um, that come to mind, and maybe because they're more in recent memory. Um, but I think, you know, going from a space where we were just really, really building our business at that time mm. um, to overnight the doors were closed. I understand. And I'm, in, I'm in events. So yeah. I understand fully. Um, so I think coming back from that, like the challenge of thinking about how are we going to get through this time mm. and coming out the other side was like, yeah, a really daunting time. I guess in that, I mean, I think we got to a point where we were like, we just have to come out stronger, mm. regardless of stronger as people, mm. regardless of where the business goes or what happens mm. to the business in this time. But use this as a time to, you know, personally come out stronger person from it. Um, Do you think that like now you take that time period in your life and you're like, God damn it, I can do anything now? Like, hundred percent. There's for sure. There's really not much that would. Yeah. I couldn't get through because of that. One Absolutely. Thing. I think it realizes just, you know, humans have just an enormous capacity to adapt, adapt and, yeah. and be resilient. Yeah. I think and as well. yeah. yeah. Um, things that you think you're never going to get through, you know, surprisingly, we, we do. do. Mm, so mm. I think it does. I think it's given everyone a bit of a sense of that, like, mm. you know, and, you know, I, I think too, it's made us really just appreciate what is yeah. important. Yeah. And, you know, that human, that connection with people, I think everyone found the hardest yeah. thing. And it's really interesting because I feel like, and I've said this so many times in conversations with people that I feel like COVID happened because the world had to pause for a second, like humanity had to pause. And what it did was eliminate the layers that we see, like all the important things, like people lost their jobs. So money was yes. ta almost taken away. The connection piece, people yeah. couldn't see their families. So yeah. that connection piece got taken away. It was like all these layers just kept getting taken away bit by bit. And then people were left with themselves. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so who are you now yeah. when you don't have the high paying job or the money coming in or the friends that tell you to do things this way and that way? Or, you know, it, it was like a weird, oh, that's what I was doing. I don't know what everybody else yeah, was doing. I was yeah, sitting yeah, in my yeah, room sure. like, oh my God, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what am I without all these things? But it was this reflective moment where I was like, okay, so if everything got taken away from me again tomorrow, yeah. would I be okay? Yeah. Like, with what I have, with who I am, mm. with, um, what was the, at the core of you? As yeah. A person? yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And how did I like get through these challenges that kept coming up? Yeah. As I'm sure everybody like yourself faced. Um, and in times where it was like, Oh my God, we're doing this again. Uh, yeah. Mm. Then eventually got to a point like, Oh, right, we're doing this again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. For sure. Let's no, go. I think it did really allow a lot of people to see how resilient yeah. they were. Um, mm. I think, you know, in many ways it probably brought out the best and some for some people brought out the worst yeah. Yeah. in people to be thrown in such a situation of, mm. um, I guess, lack of control mm. and the unknown. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people have just come out like quite strong and clear of what they what's important to them Absolutely. and what they want to do, which is like a really nice resurgence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and, I mean, I think we find for us in, in at Upstage particularly is that just – you know, it made people realise how much, you know, moving with other people, being in those connected classes, how important it is, you know, otherwise we'd still be all on Zoom doing classes at home. But uh, everyone's back and yeah. you realise how important those things were Absolutely. in your daily life. Yeah. yeah. And the, the energy from people in a yeah. room is... Absolutely. You can't, you well, can't energy is just contagious. And, yeah. like, it is. you know, in those moments of moving to people, to music, mm. um, in a positive environment, then, it, yeah, you do come out on that high and... Mm. And that was hard to get at home you on, can't. on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. No, I, do you know what? I'm so big on spaces and environments. Like I will go to certain spaces to do certain things. And if those spaces are disrupted or I'm trying to do something that's not in the environment that my mind is like used to, I really struggle to like do it. So for example, yeah. going to a cafe to do work, going to a yoga studio to practice yoga, yeah. going to the gym to do a workout, you know, cardio or whatever to try and do that all at home during, oh, oh, I was 100%. like, this is not the space. No, I'm, not in, I'm not in the environment sure. where I'm supposed to be doing Absolutely. these things. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, so it was... 100%. You weren't alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. I think I think a really key thing that I noticed as well for you know, businesses like Upstate and businesses like the events that I run yeah. is the idea of people congregating in a space, be it like around a fire or, you know, moving together or music, moving to music or just communicating is so core to us as humans mm-hmm. from Absolutely. caveman days. Yeah. All we're doing is adding a bit of tech around. Yeah. It. So it's, it's never going to go away. Yeah. Yeah. Because and like, and the, when it does go away, our whole systems just crack. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. mentally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you need it. Like, For I sure. Think... No, a sense of belonging is innate yeah. in humans. And, yeah. and you, in moments like that, whether it's yeah at a music festival or in a yoga class, moving at the same time, focusing yeah. on breath to music, mm. creates wild. such an overwhelming sense of belonging in that moment. Absolutely, that, you know that that is a key emotional reason that people continue to mm. return and do it again and again and again. Yeah, yeah. there's a, there's also something interesting that I've I came across was the now that a lot of people aren't really religious in our age yeah. group, like where fundamentally like either spiritual or just atheist yeah there are some yeah. but overall you know in previous kind of generations the like religion was a core community pillar and it allowed to f- create yeah, that kind sure. of community element that is somewhat lacking now mm-hmm. and i'm and i'm noticing that yourself like yeah. like up places like upstate yeah are now filling the gap of religion for yeah. people because mm-hmm. they have a place to congregate, they have yes. a place to connect with others. Same with events, like music. Yeah. When you've got a room full of people that are in unison, you get 500,000 people in a room yeah. in unison to an artist, Yeah. Next you level. feel the flow. It's, it's, yeah. it's just like a group yeah. of people. Like, it, And once it settles in, it's really, really special. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's also you go to places like that and on some level you're all there for the same reason. Yeah, yeah. that's you right. Know? And I think yeah. that that kind of connection yeah. is what people seek without actually realising is what yeah, they seek. 100%. Like like-minded people that yeah. understand yeah. elements of what that person might be going through, feeling, whatever, yeah. and you get mm. to have your own journey yeah. where you're doing it together. In a, in a group. Yeah. yeah, for sure. No, look, and there's, mm. there's science out there now and a lot of studies yeah. now about that whole moving to music at the same time and mm. um, what that triggers in our brains and the hormones that are released and all the good endorphins and... You know, it's pretty much a yeah, a, a little jar of happy hormones that um, <laughs> to <laughs> that put we, it in a nutshell. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, look, and I think um, I think post COVID as well, like a lot of people are still working from home, um, or like perhaps in, in their offices, you know, two days a week, or we haven't, you know, it's a different, it is a different makeup how mm. we're living now compared mm. to pre COVID. Um, so I think the relevance of having place another place that you can go to to connect with others uh, is really important for people, whether that's you know through you know fitness classes or uh, music Absolutely. events or whatever it is. I think that um, we've lost a number of our traditional places where we came together as um, a collective, um, and that's I think will continue to be the case as yeah. um, time goes on. Yeah. I think it was a pretty pivotal moment in like mm. history and evolution because Absolutely. everything changed, education changed. Yeah, like changed the way we people, work, changed the way. Yeah, yeah. like more people look, like have, have realized they have access to anything they want to learn Yeah, mm-hmm. because they were forced to do that for two years yeah. where it was like, all right, <laughs> it's all at your fingertips, literally. <laughs> yeah. Like you can go and do anything in anything absolutely. because it's probably on YouTube. Yeah, like, absolutely. And I think, you know, just even in our in our industry of, of um, fitness and wellness, um, there's been a lot of surveys that have been done through MindBody, which um, is a software program for mm-hmm. a lot of the fitness, yoga and well-being sort of businesses. Uh, you know, pre-COVID, the sort of top three reasons that people participated in fitness was, you know, to look good, um, to feel, I think it was feel strong, and I can't remember the third, but they've just recently completed the survey and the number one is to feel good. Hmm. Yeah, well. So it's gone from look good to feel That's good. Cool. That's really cool. Um, and the other, they were all more about the mental benefits and being with other people. Yeah. yeah. So that's a big shift in a short amount of time, really, yeah. to be a key reason to exercise. Yeah, internal versus external. That's right. Yeah. And I sure. think a lot of that is from the experience we've all had over the last few years that we've um, 
That's what yeah. I mean. I think it was like the shift humanity needed, and yeah. the only way it was going to happen on a like global scale was something yeah. tragic like yeah. COVID yeah. happening for Out everybody to just sped things up. Pause. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. probably. Yeah, I think we were moving in the direction. Yeah, agree. But we probably sped it up by 10 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. It really yeah. sped it up. Yeah. But I've noticed the trajectory. Like when I started meditating for the first time, it was like, I was like 23. And I came across it because the um, receptionist at my uh, engineering placement was like, oh, I did this before Ben. I'm like, hmm, I've never heard, like I've heard of it, <laughs> yeah. but I've never found a way to do it. And again, it was that very entry level way to get into something. I just yes. downloaded yep. the um, Headspace app and it explained everything. And yeah. again, Upstate is a similar, yep. it's a similar way into that path. And that led to yoga, which all those pieces fundamentally changed a lot of things. Yes. So yep. I'm noticing a lot of people are starting to really get their heads around this it's not yeah. stigmatized anymore and yeah. it's more interesting than kind of scary yeah, and it's the right. work that a, you know a lot of us are doing and a big role a reason for this podcast is to help create positive outcomes for people yeah you know and to be able to talk about things that might be a little bit taboo and might be a little bit scary and might mm. not make sense to people but with a platform like this and you know access to people like yourself it's it's very powerful and it can move messages in a positive Absolutely. direction. So mm, yeah, yeah, I'm all for it. And awesome. I, well I really done, like, guys, on on we're, sharing that with we're people. Still hey? right. yeah. and we're trying very hard. Yeah, but it's really nice. It's like really, really. It feels like this feels right. For, yeah. Like it just feels really good. And well, well like, important conversations, and I think it's um, you know I think that people are really open minded to hearing them now. To mm. to your point of just how it has shifted. Mm. Um, and I think there's an importance and I've always said this and believed this and every, everything I've done since like my YouTube channel and all the podcasts I've done is like to speak with people and not at people, yeah. like be yeah. relatable in the sense of being honest and being like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like I'm learning as I go yeah. and I'm sharing that experience with you or whoever's mm. listening yeah and that's that's what it is yeah. because that experience i've had although it might not directly relate to what something else else is going through they'll take elements of yeah, that and sure. I think that's what we do as it's an human. openness isn't it yeah, yeah you know and to yeah. feel like safe enough to just be like oh crap that person kind of gets what i'm going through yeah, like, yeah. Great, absolutely you yeah know? so yeah that relatability for absolutely sure. yeah. absolutely there's a, I was reading something a couple of days ago about meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Mm. Um, and it was just a, an explanation from a guy called Naval that I follow. I talk about him 24 <laughs> seven. Did you know Naval? <laughs> no, I don't oh, know. This guy is why yeah. he, this thing fundament, like listening to one of his podcasts, like fundamentally changed the way I think about business okay. and a lot of things in my life. Yeah. But, um, he was talking about one of his favorite books and it was meditations by marcus aurelius do you know that book and what that's about and no. who it is? yes so is. so marcus aurelius was one of the emperors of i think the roman, roman empire i'm pretty yeah. sure and he wrote a journal every day at the end of every day and you know it wasn't expected that that would ever get out yes. you know he wasn't thinking that but yeah. somehow it's gotten out and it's been put into a book and it's basically this book about one of the most powerful people in the world at that time period his thoughts, his fears, wow. everything that he, it, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, wild, right? Um, everything that he was thinking of that day, like the, the problems he was having. And the, what you get to once you read that book is even the most powerful <laughs> person on the planet has the same fears yeah. as everybody else. The same, he's got to do the same shit. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like, he's totally not right, really right. sure what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a key thing that I think that is really important. Um, is that the most successful people in the world, they all read a lot and they have some form of self-reflection, mm -hmm. be, it, be yeah. it meditation, be it journaling, yeah. be it just like Fever. walking and yeah. thinking, yeah. just yeah. like time alone to be to with their thoughts yeah. and reflect and understand, you know, reframe yes. the world. Yeah. Like Genghis Khan, for example, he before he would go into any major war, <laughs> he, uh, random shit, uh, random shit. Uh, I know some random shit. Anyway, every, more, when he would go into these, like before he would make a. Mine's just. <laughs> like, oh, I'm, just gonna have to, to, I'm gonna have to chop up a little like montage of all the the Yeah, Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, well, the next philosopher of the 21st century. I mean, maybe who knows I where this goes? But, yeah. but so he would even he like you know this guy that was took over half of the planet at one point before he was going to make a big decision he would go off into the woods alone for three days and he would sit 
Mm. Alone. He didn't have a phone. So. Yeah. <laughs> no distractions there. No distractions. So, so yeah, like, and, yeah. and, and that key piece of just stepping back from your, the inputs of your life, I think really makes you a much more focused, yeah. effective, yeah. happier, you know, person in the, in the world. And I think going back to the, the lockdowns and COVID, that forced people into a lot of that. 100%. Yeah. You know, without any lack yeah, of that's right. That's what I mean. Like, it's not... People were meditating without realizing they were meditating because they were having to yeah. sit with their thoughts. And yeah. then maybe meditation actually did find them. And they were mm. like, oh, my God. Well, yeah. I've been kind of For doing sure. this. It's so like so much time you can yeah. spend on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Radical change. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think going back to, like, movement and community and there's... There's, a, there's something that I'm really focusing on at the moment is um, going back to what we did as effectively cavemen, like what we, what we evolutionarily began with because we are pretty much cavemen <laughs> and women in this wild, like, <laughs> technological world, but, like, <laughs> we're still on an evolutionarily level, yeah. just, like, in the cave. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, like, getting moving, getting yeah. sun, getting your feet in the ground, like grounding, yes. like being around people, not having as much artificial light at certain times, eating as close to the the core of whatever food you're going to, like these, these yeah. basics. Basic fundamentals. That sure. make a huge yeah, difference right. yeah. to how you feel. And I think we're lo- we've lost that in this pursuit of more and pursuit of tech and pursuit of all these different elements, we've lost the fundamentals. And and it's probably a big part of why people are feeling really sad and are feeling really depressed. Overwhelmed, I think. Overwhelmed. Yeah, for sure. The feeling, like, yeah. And that overwhelm then just spirals and spirals and people are like, I don't know why I feel stuck. Yes, that's right. Because there's too much coming at you that we're not supposed to consume this much 24-7. It's just not the way our brains are meant to run. We've now programmed our brains to be like, you should be doing 10 things at once. Yeah. But it's like... Mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think it's just creating those spaces of time yeah. where you are stepping away from all technology. Absolutely. Um, you know, and people say to that, uh, you know, to us just with coming to class, like it's the only 45 minutes of the day where I haven't got my phone with me. Yeah. yeah. And like how good they feel from being away from their phone. <laughs> you know, which obviously we could you know, do that at any point in the day, but we tend not to. So yeah. I think these moments where we are kind of in forced situations to step, put something aside, yeah. especially technology, um, the more we can connect with that, the more we realise how important it is to actually have that Absolutely. time to yourself. Yeah. I actually don't look at my phone goes in another room before I go to bed. It's on aeroplane mode every night. And I don't look at it for ideally the first two hours of the day. That you're, is like as, you're like uh, more evolved than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think I've, I don't have the chaos of a lot of things. Like I do sometimes, and there's a version of me at times that's like, oh my god, I got so many shit, so many texts and emails to get through. Yeah. But I really, really have been trying no, for awesome. quite a while. Yeah, it's a great practice to have. Just yeah. yeah, just to not start my day off on someone else's like as on someone else's problem. Yes. So yeah. the key thing mm-hmm. being just like. I know what can help me be the most effective version of me for the day. And this scales if I've slept in or I've had a late yeah. night or I'm a bit stressed or I've got a lot of work to do. But generally, it's like you wake up, you get some sun, you drink some water, uh, a quick gratitude journal, maybe a quick like five minute of reading, meditate, and then a shower, and then look at the phone. Yeah, I love that. I love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> My day starts at um, 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, it's a little message of something's happened to the sound system at 5.30 in the morning. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but this is yeah. a life you chose, That's you know. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other oh, way. That's so sure. funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm conscious it's nearly four and you're going to have to leave yes. soon. So I reckon I'm going to ask you one more question. Cool. Um, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given, be it business, be it life, and what would you – is that advice you would give to someone else? Or, or... maybe 18-year-old you? Yeah. Oh, gosh. What is the best piece of advice I've ever been given? Um, I mentioned that one before, which is one that I sort of come back to. So, But I'll try to uh, think of another one. Um, look, I think one that just come, has randomly come to mind that is, is just so basic 
in many ways, but it was my from my dad who was just, just used to say all the time, just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And it wouldn't matter what I would be talking about. He would be like, oh, just, yeah, just go for that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'd be like, okay. Yeah, like, and, which is awesome because there was just no, no doubt in his mind yeah. that you could have a go. Yeah. yeah. It didn't mean that you were going to get it. Yeah. And like, was well, never, you know, you can, like, you should do that. You it was will more achieve. like, just have a go. Just give it, yeah. Um, which I think has, like, so basic, but I think it actually is a big part of, my mindset too to just to just apply and have a go and apply yourself at mm. whatever it might yeah. be um so that is like as basic as it can get i don't think it ever has to be mm. complicated though like yeah. i really honestly do believe like we sit there and try to think of like marcus or Elias quotes and stuff like that but even his stuff is so basic and yeah. simple yeah. as well like yeah. it's just it, especially if that's been instilled in you from a very young age a part of you believe, like, just believes that. Like, just yeah. go for it. What's the worst thing that can happen or what's the best thing that That's can happen? That's right. And mm. I think, do you know what? I think uh, humans are really good at overcomplicating. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and hey. <laughs> and I, I think it's one thing that I've actually s- s- am very good at simplifying things mm. in as when I think back to my career in different situations would be just really simplifying coming back to what is the basic mm. yeah, question yeah. we're asking ourselves here at this point and then finding a clear answer. Yeah. Um, mm. So perhaps it's not surprising that my um, reference is, is a pretty simple one because mm. I don't, I don't uh, overcomplicate much of my thinking. And Farmagal um, just uh, just up at four, just uh, yeah, chilling the farm, <laughs> working it. hard, and yeah. going to bed and looking after yourself. Yeah. yeah, I I honestly do not take I don't take myself very seriously. It's a big thing as well, and I don't think that life is serious. I mean, or we're, complicated. We're all monkeys on a like yeah. on a well, little know. asteroid going yeah. somewhere. Around the world. Yeah, there's some overcomplication there. But no, <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 Shots fired. <laughs> I do think there's just a really um, living, you know, there's all the things you've almost said before about the simplicity of life. Like yeah. Some of the best things in life are the simplest. Yeah. And um, I probably do operate from a very keep it simple basis because mm. life's too bloody short to make it that complicated. Oh, mm. absolutely. Absolutely. Again, I'm just full of just one-liners, but there's, <laughs> a, there's one that I heard that, that where it's like, make it as simple as possible, but no simpler. So like, make it what it needs to be, yeah. yes. and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And everything else can work out. Like, I'm yeah. bad with it. I just, I think I just go, oh, we can do all of this stuff, and then it's like, okay, I'm gonna. No, I got text messages. I got bags full. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got four bags full of stuff just in case. I love like, it. But I'm getting better. I am definitely working on it and I'm conscious of it. It's just taking some time. I think a lot of the time it's a fear based. Like, what if I miss something? Like, what if, yeah. what if things aren't, what if I make a mistake? Like, what if, like, genuinely it's fear based. Yeah. And I really like what you, you said, uh, that your, your dad kind of instilled in you. And I think it's probably a very important thing that I'm going to instill, try and instill in my children is just to give them the foundation of give it a crack. It's going yes. to be okay. Yeah. And you, will fall and you will fail and you can you just got to get up every time yeah, that's it and that's a big thing in parenting like I, you know i guess i didn't really have that when i grew up and yeah. i had to find that myself yeah but if you can have it instilled by a parent it it gives you leaps and bounds ahead yeah and i think it's i think it's good to look back and think i said yes to things yeah there's no there's no real regret then of I didn't. I didn't go for it. I didn't. Yeah, I said yeah. no to things. I said, you know, saying yes to things and like failing at some and being terrible at some and some worked and some didn't. And you know, that's all just the experience that shapes your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it's just the attitude of just saying saying yes. Sending it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love sending it. That was, that was exactly like this podcast. As soon as I said it to people, they're like, third, three, third podcast." I was like, "End." Yeah, love that. And what? Yeah. Like, so yeah. what? Zero or Wait for the next one after this. <laughs> 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 but you know, we've got something to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm but, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's it. Like, I'm just like, I 
I don't care about starting again anymore yes. because I've had to do it so many times, whether it was in business, whether it was in relation, every part of my life, I am so present in the moment something has ended and got, yeah. I've gone, okay, yeah, like, cool. Like yeah. I learned X, Y, Z. <laughs> That's yeah. going to be applied to the next thing. And every single time, maybe the thing that I do doesn't get better, but I get better. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So I'm just like, yeah. you know what? Bring it. Like, yeah. what's next? I'm what is you. next? I'm with you. Totally. Yeah. Go. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Like my next yeah. project, <laughs> I am stepping way out of my bounds. I can't talk about it yet, but it's like, kind of wild. <laughs> literally. And it happened like that. Yeah. And it was also. so right yeah. that I was just like, yeah. I can't sleep because all I'm thinking about is this thing now and how I'm going to make this thing happen that... It's going to because yeah. there's no part of me that's like, oh, but what if? I'm like, and what if? I know there's going to be yeah. challenges. Mm-hmm. I just and have to do open it. to it. Yeah. Yeah. I just have to do it. Ooh, I'm excited to know what that is now. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> we get involved after a few things. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it. I, love it. Um, I have one more question or do you want to do you have time for one more question? One more question. Yeah. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. Um, what is one change you've made in your life that has had the most impact on your quality of life? One change that I've made in my life. Oh, look, I, the thing that just comes to top of mind is is yoga. What a way to round it up. Cool. I think yeah. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Uh, uh, thanks, oh, guys. Yes, I had better go. No, that's all good. All of a sudden, the Welcome. school bus will be there. Thank you, cool. Thank you, thank you. Another episode of the One Time Podcast. We've got Gail from Upstate. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Your time and your yeah. stories. Thank and you. Great chat. Yeah, yeah. appreciate you. All right. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>